Okay, um, I'm just gonna be running through the accessories back end like service I did for the galvanized capstone project. Um, and uh, this is kind of like, uh, as I talked about in my other video, uh, like the extra stretch goal type of thing I did with my, um, cause, I, cause I think actually everyone on my team kind of had some free time towards the end. So we all did a little, um, a little bit extra. Um, and uh, just, you know, brief summary, uh, it's in Gradle, which is, not completely ideal since um, it seemed like everybody in the boot camp at T-Mobile was has been working with Maven, uh, but you know that's the way the instructor set up the boot camp was to teach basically fully in Gradle. I think uh, my two teammates were might have been two of only a handful, or they might have actually only been the only two who um, actually deployed projects. Um, you know, in their with their extra time in Maven, um, but uh, since I already had the front end UI as my main priority, and then I kind of did this as a stretch goal, I didn't really have time to do this in Gradle, and then again in Maven. Uh, so I this this whole project's in Gradle. Um, kind of had a miscommunication with a teammate because the whole bootcamp was remote, um, and I think. I, I originally thought we were going to like separate the accessories by categories, um, you know, like headphones and phone cases and etc. So I thought, we, you know, this uh, kind of organized folder structure would be necessary. Um, but, you know, he already had set up the MySQL database um, with just one broad accessories category. So uh, this seems kind of redundant to have these folders, but um, that's the reason why they're there. Um, so I was, uh, don't want to actually show the actual, um, you know, application properties, um, file just because, uh, you know, the database was made by my teammates and, um, yeah, I don't think they would actually really care, but, you know, just, in, just cause I would feel bad if, uh, you know, they, they were upset, um, <laughs> um, you know, but uh, anyways, the application prod properties has all the um, the variables needed to connect to the MySQL database that my teammates created. And um, on that note, while I, you know, all of our microservices originally were written to have JPA repositories, um, so I had kind of like a local uh, repository to work with uh, when I wrote this, but. I didn't actually uh, work with the MySQL database at all. Um, that was almost, uh, at, that was actually completely managed by my other two teammates. Uh, and that was partly due to, you know, um, just logistics. Um, I didn't really have time to get involved with that. Um, but uh, yeah, so, you know, I had the JP repository, but we were basically uh, pretty shortly in um, after I started making this, uh, we were almost completely just doing all our testing and all our manipulation and uh, just anything related to database uh, stuff with uh, the MySQL database that my teammates created. Um, so anyways, uh, don't think there's that much else to talk about here. Um, it's just a very simple, honestly, at the end of the day, this is very simple. Um, this is a very simple microservice. Um, just the main goal is to be able to perform basic CRUD functionality um, as per the intentions of the assignments that uh, the bootcamp, the Galvanized bootcamp provided for us. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's written fully, by the way, in Java 8 uh, Spring Boot. And um, yeah, so it's just got basic get, uh, get by ID, uh, post, patch by ID, and delete by ID functionality. Um, okay, so I already have the application running on uh, boot run locally. 
So if we go here to Postman, um, this is, uh, you know, even locally, um, when I'm boot running locally, I'm using the application prod properties just to connect to the database. Because like I said before, we were just using that one main database for everything, including dev, test, prod, you know, etc. cetera. So um, this is the actual database, the, the prod database that is being reflected here. Um, locally. So if I just do a local get request, this will return all the data we have. Um, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to demonstrate every single uh, CRUD functionality um, in the video um, just for the sake of time. Um, so what else is there? Uh, let's see. Uh, well, testing, I did completely in Spock um, for a couple of reasons. The main reason being that's what my team at Team Mobile has been using and I want to get practice. Um, I think I was actually the only student in my cohort, uh, the galvanized cohort that actually used Spock. But um, these aren't very, uh, I guess, well-written tests. <laughs> um, I was uh, just trying to get practice and trying to achieve the 50% code coverage mark that the, um, the bootcamp had provided for us. So um, it's not going to look uh, that complex in here. Um, but using, um, using the Jacoco test uh, results um, plugin, we can actually, I already um, made the plugin a second ago, so I'll go to the um, actual file just to show you right now. Um, let's see, build. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to make it again, so let me just do that real quick. Test report. Test report. All right, and uh, now if I go into my build folder, go to reports, Jacoco test HTML, and that is my fifty nine percent code coverage from. All my tests. All right. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit about deployment and our pipeline now. Um, and I already covered some of this with the previous video, so I'm not uh, with the front end, so I'm not going to get into it too much. Um, but um, all of our pipelines for all front end, back end, uh, all deployed applications uh, ran through Docker. Um, and then eventually we're deployed to um, Conductor, um, which is the, the cloud service we use that we were using um, from T-Mobile. Um, so this is our Docker file. Um, it's a, a OpenJDK Java 8, or JDK 8, I should say, base image. Um, let's see. Just taking the uh, the jar file from the build, which the build. Um, so as opposed to the uh, the previous video I made um, with the um, front end that had kind of the Python base image that served the copied build. Um, this microservice is actually 
kind of run normally in the pipeline where there is the actual build stage, which comes, that, that build stage is being handled by T-Mobile template, which is, uh, which is specified for Java um, 8 or you know, JDK 8, um, as opposed to, you know, part of the reason we used that whole Python thing with the front end was because T-Mobile actually didn't have a template um, for React because it didn't, T-Mobile doesn't really use React. Um, so, but in this case, this is actually um, in the pipeline being built normally. And then within the build, um, it's grabbing the jar file um, and then um, copying that jar file here to this jar file. Um, the, po the Docker port that's being exposed is 8080 and then uh, it's serving up that jar file on that do Docker um, image. Um, so I can't talk too much more about the pipeline. So I guess I can't talk about, look into any of these, but basically um, the end result of the pipeline is deployed to conductor. And this is what the conduct, deploy conductor page is like. Um, everything is on the accessories route. So this is just the get all. Um, JSON return from the uh, from the deployed microservice. Um, don't think there's much else I can can really get into that's that important. Um, but if there are uh, any questions, um, I'm always um, I'm I always welcome any questions or curiosities, so please let me know. Other than that, thanks for watching and uh, take care.